Hey, how you doing? So this is going to be Obscure Metal, Underrated Metal, Part 3. And Happy New Year. Um, the date of this video is the 5th of January. And yeah, it's really cold here in Japan. There's been a big earthquake on the other side of Japan. Felt it pretty strongly here in Tokyo, but yeah, no damage. But pretty bad on the west side. Anyway, yeah, so we're looking at some metal. Um, starting with this band called Tease. Kind of like a 70s looking band and this is a song called gonna have a good time tonight so this song was actually covered by jimmy barnes and michael hutchins from in excess and it got really big in australia but yeah this is the original version of the song i've um, got the japanese insert so i'm missing the olibi strip they're from canada and they only put out four albums the first one was I think this one. Um, then they put 78, um, a live album in 79, and then a second album in 79, and their final album was 1980. After that, just compilations. Yeah, pretty good music, you know. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of April Wine. They've got a bit of a connection with April Wine, I think. All right, next up, we've got the band Money. Pretty cool cover. They're an American band. Album's called Trust Me. Uh, this album you can get in, in a different cover than this, just with sort of like a cartoony businessman on the front. I think this cover's better. Got the band on the back. Uh, these guys are from Ohio, and they were in a 1980s band called The Muffs, or The Muff Brothers. And um, yeah, they changed their name to Money. They opened for big acts like Cheap Trick, uh, Night Ranger, UFO, Iron Maiden, uh, Gamma. So yeah, they um, did a lot of touring, I guess, early 80s. So there's a Trust Me 1 and a Trust Me 2 album. Um, the Trust Me 2 album was produced by the guy from Badfinger. But yeah, 1982, the first album came out, then 83, and then they put an album out in 87 called In The Red. And that album, pretty expensive, like there's only two for sale on Discogs and they're, you know, up over 300 euro on CD, must be really rare. Yeah, pretty sort of eccentric rock music really, wouldn't call it metal. But yeah, they're on the heavy metal label, so... All right, next up, we've got a band called Zero Nine. We've got a girl in a pool. So yeah, these guys, they started in 78. Their first album was 82, called Blank Verse. Then I've got their third album actually called Headline. This album was after that. This one was 1985. And this one's called White Lines. So, you know, in the 80s, there was a popular song called White Lines about probably cocaine, I guess. Yeah, this one sounds pretty good. It's a bit AOR, but heavier than the last couple. All right, next up, we've got a pretty famous album if you're a metalhead, but these guys didn't get big. Uh, it's Omen, and it's called The Curse. Everybody probably thought these guys were just as big as Iron Maiden and Judas Priest in the 80s, but they kind of got left behind. Band in the back. Real cool cover. Very thrashy, I reckon. Sound. Yeah, cool pics of the band. These guys started in 83, and their first album was Battle Cry. And then Warning of Danger, so this was their third album, came out in 86. And yeah, you know, they hold their price, these ones, especially in this condition. All right, next up we've got Lizzie Borden. Yeah, this so. is an EP, so you give them the axe, kiss of death, and then No Time to Lose, Long Live Rock and Roll. Started in 83, and um, you know, they've changed lineups quite a lot. They're pretty famous for having their songs in that 88 horror movie, Black Roses. 
Yeah, um, they put out albums right through the 80s. Um, just one album, like a greatest hits in the 90s. And most recent was My Midnight Things in 2018. So um, yeah, I'll have to get that. I see it around a bit. Uh, next up, we got the Mama's Boys, Waiting for a Miracle. This is a single or an EP. Um, I'm including these guys because they're very sort of underrated, you know. But this is when the band kind of went AOR in 1987. So this is a good one to grab. It's not the best cover in the world, though. Yeah, the Band of Brothers, I think, um, you know, by this time, one of the brothers might have left or something. Just something happened. Yeah, whenever I hear this song, it sort of reminds me a bit of John Farnham, even the singing style. So yeah, this is Waiting for a Miracle extended AOR mix. And then on side B, you got the seven inch mix and Lightning Strikes, another song. Yeah, these guys started in 78. We had a pretty strong connection with Tim Lizzy. All right, next up, we've got 1987 album from Haywire. Um, Don't Just Stand There, it's got the Obi strip. These guys probably very similar sound to the Mama's Boys last album. This has got the sticker, which means it was from a library. Got the Japanese insert. They're not bad, you know, it's kind of got Europe, Bon Jovi, sort of AOR vibes, Loverboy, you know, all those kind of bands. Um, there's only one for sale on Discogs and it's going for 4,800 yen. Pretty expensive. Yeah, sort of, um, yeah, it sounds very sort of typical AOR melodic rock. These guys are from Canada. They started in 82. First album came out 84. Then they had Bad Boys 86. And then this was their third album. Um, you can get it with a different cover. All right, next up we've got a bit of an obscure one, uh, not really metal, but um, it, they're called Price Sultan. Yes, Tommy Price and Kasim Sultan. But this album came out in 86, and it's got heavy guitars, but very synthy. Um, there's only one for sale on Discogs going for nearly 6,000 yen with the Obi. If you're a fan of the cars, um, this has um, a few guitar solos on there from Elliot Easton. So Kasim Sultan, the bass guitarist, the thing about him is he was a touring guitarist for Blue Oyster Cult, um, you know, the recent years. Plus he'd been in Joan Jett and the Black Arts, also Scandal, and he was in the New Cars. So you know, the New Cars was the band um, that Elliot Easton formed. So yeah, a bit of a Cars connection. All right, next up, Tyron Pace. So cover, you got a Flying V on fire. And yeah, Ralph Sheepers with his hair. These days, you know, so you'd never know, he used to have long hair. Yeah, really good album this, you know, Euro Metal. Yeah, sound very similar to Judas Priest. So, you know, he nearly got the um, Judas Priest singing spot when Rob Halford left. Him and Ripper Owens, you know, were the last two sort of, um, you yeah, know, contenders. But probably he wanted more money, maybe. He sounds kind of very young. Yeah, album lyrics in English and their management is in West Germany. Their first album was 84, Eye to Eye, and this is their second album. And they had two more albums after this. Uh, their last album was in 98, Take a Seat in the High Row. Yeah, you see this one around a lot. Um, it holds its price, you know, on Discogs, they're going for 3,000 yen, so it's a good one. All right, next up, we've got Titan. Uh, there's a few bands out there called Titan, but these guys, T-Y-T-A-N. And really cool album cover. The album's called Rough Justice. Real epic start to the album. Yeah, 
Yeah, it sounds a bit like Kiss to me. Not bad. So yeah, these guys, um, they started back in the new wave of British heavy metal movement, um, 81 to 83. Uh, their 1985 album was actually recorded in 82, this one. Mixed in 83, but it wasn't released until 85 because their label had gone bankrupt. Yeah, but you know, it sounds pretty good for 85, I reckon. So yeah, they only really um, put out this album. They put an EP out in 1982 called Blind Men and Fools, which is this song. Yeah, they had a lot of label trouble and um, a lot of lineup changes and things. So um, yeah, it really hurts the band. Next up, we've got Demon. This one is British Standard Approved. And um, I've just sort of jumped through the first song because it starts like with a bit of, um, you know, sort of ambient music. But this song is called Cold in the Air. Um, and the album is actually dedicated to Malcolm Spooner and Phil Tunstall. So they died when this album was just uh, recorded. That's Malcolm Spooner there. And apparently these guys kind of started out as a hard rock band. Like, you know, they're called Demon, but they were never really heavy metal. Um, but for this album, they went into Pink Floyd territory, sort of classic rock. It was released on a small independent label and it wasn't commercially successful. And then Mal Spooner died later in the year. So um, everybody thought the band would break up. But then they got a keyboard player in and um, they put out more albums right through the 80s. And you know, they're still going. All right, next up we've got Black and White. So this is the album. Um, I had it on cassette as a kid, so I was able to find it again over here. And they only really put out this album and this single. So I finally got this single. And it's called Rainbow Bar and Girls. And you've got Rainbow Bar and Girls Rock Mix, and then Side 2, Tease After School Mix, and the Urban Gorilla Mix. So it came out in 88. And, um, you know, this is kind of like when rap metal was getting big. And it's sort of hard to find out a lot of information about this band. There seemed to be a black guy and a white guy. So you've got Jeff Gaskins, I think he's the white guy, and then Victor Wade Williams. And, um, you know, this is all they're known for, these two things. So you would probably have to go into a time machine back into the 80s and work out who they were and because it's really hard to find out but it's really good music um, they have like real rock and solos like in all their each song yeah sort of you know um, crossover territory you know getting uh, metal heads into sort of more hip-hop kind of music worked Alright, last up, we've got Living Colour, um, sort of an underrated band, I reckon. Um, they started out real metal, you know, a lot of people were sort of reminded of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, they had that first album called Vivid, and a uh, big song on that was Cult of Personality, a really heavy song. And this is one of the extra singles on that album, uh, Funny Vibe. So you've got like um, four or five different remixes of the song. Um, not really any heavy guitars in this song. It's more of a kind of a dance song and you know the song's all about Black people complaining about white people being racist. So, you know Not for everybody. Yeah, they're a great band. Um, they started in I think it was 84 they formed in 84 by um, Vernon Reed a yeah, guitarist and um, their first album was 88. They put out Times Up in 90. Um, another album, Stain, 92. That was a standout album. But then after that, I kind of lost sort of track of them. Um, a lot of live albums and compilation albums. So I'm not really sure what they're doing these days. I reckon they'd still be around. I know Vernon Reed still is. 
Anyway, all done. So uh, this is part three and there will be one more video coming out, Obscure Metal. So hang out for that and I'll see you then.